I married Joe. What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married Joe. What a mind, love is blind, what a wife. Joan Davis. With Jim Backus in I to the different committees that I'm on at the Women's Club. I'm returning it all. Well, it would be nice to get this closet back in active service, but what brought this on? Brad. Brad? Yeah, it seems that I'm not spending enough time with him. He says every time he asks me to go someplace with him, I have a meeting. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Oh, these are six chicken sandwiches left over from the 4th of July picnic. I have to turn them over to the new picnic chairman. Oh, uh, here's something interesting. What on earth is that? Uh, this is the cast from Florence Bishop's broken leg last year. What are you doing with it? Oh, I'm also chairman of the Historical Archives Committee. <laughs> Look, all the girls sign their names. Oh, wonderful. Well, Miss Natalie, Helen, Herman. Herman? <laughs> Florence's husband. Oh, excuse me, I'll get it. Hello? Oh, yes, Alice, she's right here. It's for you, Joan. Alice Tucker, she's chairman of that horrible play that the club is giving. It's a real turkey. I saw her rehearse it. I know what she wants. She probably wants me to go out and sell tickets. Well, I'm just not going to do it. I promised Brad that I wouldn't do any extra club work. I'm not even going to go and see the play. If there's anything that I can't stand, it's amateur theatricals. I'm going to have absolutely nothing to do with it. Besides, Alice is an awful pest. <laughs> Hello, Alice, dear. <laughs> yes, I know. You're calling about the play. Well, you see, I promised Brad, and I could... Huh? You want me to play the lead? Well, what about Jane? She's been rehearsing. I thought that... Hmm? Oh, laryngitis. Well, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> Say, we're all going to have to get behind this thing and sell a lot of tickets, aren't we? <laughs> oh, yes, I'll, I'll rush right down and get the script, dear. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, you have the costume and wig ready also? Well, that'll be fine. Goodbye, sweetie. Me playing the lead? Gosh, Joan. Golly, Joan. Gee, Mimi. Tallulah. What is it, darling? <laughs> How can you be in the play? You promised Brad you'd give up club work. Oh, but this is different. I I'm playing the lead. Oh. And it's a perfect part for me. I play the part of Gwendolyn, a beautiful but scheming brunette who is... Brunette? I wear a wig. Who is very tall and statuesque. Very and tall? I wear platform shoes. Who has this voluptuous figure who simply... Voluptuous figure? Oh, please, Vera, stop interrupting, dear. Now, you come over and I'll tell you all about it. You see, I'm married to Noel, a fabulously wealthy man who simply bores me to death. I also have a boyfriend, Roger, who is after me for Noel's money. So I divorce Noel after getting his money, and I marry Roger, who becomes a bigger bore than Noel, who becomes my boyfriend because he is after me for Roger's money, which used to be Noel's. Then I meet, um, Cecil. Who's Cecil? Nobody. I just want to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> Hiya, girl. Oh, hello, hello, darling. You're home early. Yes, hello, Joni. <laughs> Wonderful news, Joan. Oh, it's just a club play. It isn't much. <laughs> uh, you know, the last week or so, there's been a rumor that Dean Gilmore, he's the dean of the State University Law School up north, has been trying to decide whom to invite to address the graduating class. It's uh, quite an honor, you know. Oh, that's wonderful. And I have wonderful news for you. I'm Gwendolyn. Oh, well, that's fine, honey. Now, this afternoon, he called me and invited us to have dinner tonight with him and his wife. 
Oh, that's nice. You see, in this part, I play a socialite who is very sophisticated. Oh, oh, oh that's, that's good. Now, I actually haven't been invited to address the class yet, but I can tell you this. The fellow who spoke to the class last year, today, is a federal judge. Bully. <laughs> you see, my husband, Noel, is a federal judge. Brad, how wonderful. When are you going to get the appointment? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute honey. Not, not, not quite so fast. He hasn't asked me yet. But I, inviting us to dinner is a very good sign. Now, I particularly want you to make a good impression on Mrs. Gilmore. The dean is uh, somewhat uh, influenced by her. Oh, he's henpecked, huh? <laughs> now, don't you dare to suggest a thing like that in front of them. Oh, I won't, dear. I'll be on my very best behavior. <laughs> well, you'd better, because I don't want anything to go wrong. Absolutely nothing. Now, uh, money is no object. I uh, want you to look your best tonight. Wow! <laughs> your very best. <laughs> really want you to look beautiful tonight. Oh, I've got a million things to do. First, I've got to get a shampoo and a facial and a manicure and pick out a lovely hat. Oh, what am I going to do about picking up the script and the costume and the wig? Oh, don't worry, darling. I'll pick those things up for you. Oh, thanks, Aunt Mary. You're a real doll. That'll give me more time to choose just the right hat. Brad, I'm so happy. You're going to be a federal judge, and I'm going to be Gwendolyn. <laughs> yes, sir. A federal judge. Gosh, won't Gwendolyn be proud of me? <laughs> Gwendolyn. <laughs> what a moon. Gwendolyn. <laughs> 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 can't make up my mind. I don't know whether to take this hat or this. Oh, I think the one you bought looks just lovely on you, madam. But I never thought I could wear a wide brim. Nonsense. You have the perfect face for a wide brim. Really? I always thought I had an off-the-face face. <laughs> oh, if my dinner party wasn't so... Excuse me. One of my out-of-town customers. Good afternoon, Mrs. Gilmore. May I help you? Yes, Elena. I want something very cocktailish. We're night clubbing tonight, the dean and I. I think I have just what you'd like. Some lovely things came in just yesterday. <laughs> hmm. If you don't mind, may I have the hat back, please? Well, I have just as much right to try this hat on as you. You can't put a hold on a hat just because you feel like it. Do you have a deposit on it? No, I don't. Well, then stop acting as if you own it. <laughs> well, I mean, after all. But I do own it. Because until a hat is bought and paid for, any customer... <laughs> I said I own it. I came in here with it, and by heaven, I'm leaving with it. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, please forgive me. I feel so... Foolish. That is quite all right. 
You start with these, dear. I'll see what else I can find. Thank you, Helena. with my purse. Your purse? Why, I must say you have your nerve rummaging through another person's possessions. What is the matter with you? Now, hold on there. I don't rummage through other people's belongings at all. This happens to be my purse. I left it right here. Or did I leave it right here? <laughs> You see, they're very much alike. It uh, must have come from the same alligator. Here, I'll put all your stuff back. <laughs> well, it, it was an honest mistake, you know. It could happen to anyone. People you run into these days. First. Oh, no, you didn't. I picked it up just the same time that you did. The sales lady brought this hat especially for me to look at. Oh, she did? Yes, she did. Now, will you please let go? Of course. Oh! You! Well, I'm awfully sorry. It was an accident. You I... fool, you, you maniac! Now, wait a minute. First, you try to steal my own hat. Then you go through my purse. Then you smash me in the face. How dare you? Now, wait a minute, lady. You must be losing your head or something. I wouldn't do this. Of all the... You! Well, that's the way the kid wants to play. Here, give me a good one. With pleasure. 